I'll tell you a secret. I have an addictive personality. And with an addictive personality, we are tasked with the question of how can I do that which will do me in and use it in a way that it will allow me to get something out. And this has really been the journey of my art and the compensation for inner turmoil that I realized wasn't going to let go of me. And it wasn't something that I could medicate away. It was something that I essentially had to learn how to navigate. And I did. When I was younger, I thought, well, if one was good, five must be better. Meaning that all of the mistakes that are made in terms of following the, the, the beckoning of addiction, follow me, that seduction of, I will make it easier for you. When you start to write and then you have a drink, and then suddenly the writing's a little easier and things roll out of you a little bit more quickly and then the next night it's, it's even better and then, then the third night it's not so good. And the fourth night is very frustrating because it's not happening. You know, so you drink a little bit more, you know, trying to, trying to get back there and you never can. Because what's happening is the addictive thing is beginning to take the lead. It's saying, instead of writing, why don't we start drinking? We don't need to do that, we can just do this, it's easier. And we begin to make a deal within ourselves that I'm convinced now is actually telling us about when you look around at our fellow human beings, addiction is such a problem on so many levels. We become addicted to anger, we become addicted to media, we become addicted to the, the driving fast, we become addicted to sports, we become, because in a way, it starts to get at a very deep issue which is a feeling of meaninglessness. And that, can I find a way to fill in this emptiness? Can I put something in there that makes it a little less jagged, a little less painful? And so we turn to these qualities that distract us. And I think one of the most difficult things is coming to terms with that realization that, that it doesn't help and only I can make the transition that I must make. And that's why I know that people that are in AA that really begin to say, if I'm going to change me, I have to change my behavior. I have to change my world outlook. I have to change the story I'm telling myself about who I think I am. And I found when I quit drinking that I, I said, oh my gosh, I didn't realize, but I had all these associations. Well, look, a little sherry here and a little glass of wine there. And it was, it, well, if I stop that, then am I giving up part of my identity? And I realized maybe that is what we need to come to terms with, that there's ritual in all of that. And the sense that ritual can't just be jettisoned, it has to be replaced. And it has to essentially begin to inquire into, well, what is that part of the story that you can tell yourself that allows you not to become infatuated with the things that consume time, consume the body, consume the mind. And we wake up the next day in a type of dull response, looking to do just the same, as if to numb ourselves all the way to the grave. And part of my quest as an artist, as a thinker, as, as a father, as a husband, as a friend, has always been the relationship to community, to how do we take our addiction and make it something positive. If I have lots of energy, and I do have lots of energy, then how do I take the energy so it's not eating me, but I actually am able to give it voice? And one of the great truths for me was that when I made a decision that I would not drink, because again, I'm not moderate, I have a very addictive personality, I said inwardly that, and this is like pushing a great stone against a door, I vowed that the next drink I take is the day I will myself to die. And from that moment on, because I saw my life unfold almost like a flash, what would have happened had I followed the spiral? It would have led to devastation. And that it needed, at least in my journey, for me to make a completely, I have to cut this off, no exits. I am not the type that go, well, I'll have a couple of beers. No, nothing. But what's very interesting at that time in my life, my, my eldest daughter was born, so I became a father. 
And then I became overwhelmed with the desire to paint. And you might think of me as a painter, but I was not a painter then. I drew, and I, but I, my dad was a painter. I didn't think I, I would be a painter. But when Caitlin was born and I stopped taking in that intoxication, suddenly this other energy, this other quality was able to find its way out of me. Now that didn't mean I suddenly was a great painter. I couldn't paint my way out of a sack when I started. And as a matter of fact, it was because I made some glorious mistakes, some oops, that made me go, oh, well, that's very interesting. And then I followed that side of the story. Let me follow the oops. Let me follow the interesting. And I started to realize that what a lot of these emptinesses within us are doing are really trying to force through ourselves something that we can cultivate. And that's why I don't say that, that the artist of life or of consciousness is a painter, but it's how you approach the questions, the difficulties. Am I defined by my addiction? Is this who I am? Or is it possible that maybe I can begin to try and transmute this energy that insists, that finds, in a sense, a hunger for things that I can put in a different direction? And that's what happened with me. I began to put my ferocious energy not into something that was devouring me, but actually finally letting something out of me and I, I, I rather feel that it's not that the path out of addiction or even the path into addiction is the same for any two people. But I do think that those of us that appreciate the fact of just how overpowering addictive tendencies can be and how if we don't augment or create something else, in other words, if we feel meaningless, we're going to either overeat, we're going to overdrink, we're going to do something. So my question is, well, what can we do to create, even if we're pretending, to create a sense of, you know what, I am meaningful. I don't need someone else. I don't need for, you know, someone to show up and define, oh, this is what the world is, and I can finally go, Phew. ah, great, the world is that. I was always hoping it would be. Because what if at the end of the day, addiction, all of the difficulties, the difficult times we're living in, are really, really and truly a type of alchemical test? really like being thrown out into the dark ocean, plunged into it. And we're thinking, I'm going to drown. And of course, looking around, it seems like we are going to drown. But it's saying, no, trust your humanity, because actually when you're thrust into these conditions, you learn how to swim. Not because you want to, but because you have to. So maybe that's the gift of, of, of so many going through addiction. And I've seen it happen over and over again. I've seen it happen in my own family where I'm so proud of the people that I see the change in their physicality, in how they hold themselves, in their sense of personal worth, because they like who they are finally. And so maybe this is that each of us are in our own way dealing with these things. But if we look around and honor one another and say, well done, I know how hard this is. And I know what you're going through, not just every now and then, but every day. And you're choosing to say, I will chart my life this way. For me, I don't know what else would define the heroic tendency. I will choose the better version of myself, not because I'm told to, but because I can. And if I can, then when I do it, it will be my story, my art form. And I will then be able to take this book of my life and say, well, at least, you know what? I took the difficulty and I tried to add something to it. And I say this even if one is not successful with their addiction, that all parts of this story are played out. And if we see this as the story of addiction played out, not just one of us, but all of us, we realize we're dealing with a collective trauma that is trying to say, in empathy and grace, we support each other and say, brother, sister, I'm with you. I know how hard it is. And believe that you are that which brings meaning to the story. So if you feel meaningless, start cultivating yourself. Start saying, what gives me a sense of meaning? Maybe it's reading, maybe it's gardening, maybe it's, I don't know, helping out the community. But a sense that says we're about something. Become addicted to that. At least that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you. <laughs>